Hello there, my name is Simon and I'm the product manager for Strings Connect and Deliver here at Phrase. And I'd like to show you the first version of how our Unity integration works. So in the uh, Phrase environment, I have a test project. And within here, you can see that there's not a lot going on. There's no languages set up, there's no keys. And we could normally set up these bits and pieces from here. You could set your default locale and the additional languages you'd like to translate to. But I think that it would make sense for us to talk about what you could do to, to do this work from within Unity itself. So firstly, you'll need to set up your uh, connection. So over here in the Integrations tab, you've got the Unity integration. And if you click on Install, you'll be taken to a page which will help you exp uh, uh, install the functionality within Unity. Uh, if you are also logging in via uh, using an access token, then you'll need to go to your um, uh, profile settings and get an access token set up as I have done here. And then you'll need to take that information over to Unity. When you're in Unity, you'll now see underneath the assets localization space that we have phrase here. And what I've also got set up is a localization table with a couple of additional languages enabled. We have English, which I speak, German, which I don't, and uh, Serbian, which my engineer does and was used here for the setup. So very grateful to him for helping with that. But let's make sure we're all connected up with phrase. So we click on the phrase integration and over here on the inspector, we've got phrase connection and I'm just gonna expand this out as well. We have the environment options, custom US or EU. I'm leaving it to custom just now because I'm doing a demo on our QA environment. And you can see that also from the API URL, which would be slightly different for yourselves, but you get that information from the setup information. You've got under authentication type, token or OAuth. And if you clicked on OAuth and clicked on login using OAuth, then if you were logged in already, then you would immediately get redirected back here and you would have the option to fetch your projects. I'm going to use token in this case, and I have here pasted in the API key and I'm going to click fetch projects. And now you can see from select project, I've got a couple of options here and I'm going to stay on my uh, option here, my Simon Unity test. And I'm going to have a look at the missing locales in phrase. If I click on this option, the following locales are missing in phrase strings. So I'm going to select all, create in phrase. Three locales have been created in phrase. Let's just confirm on that. If we then refresh the languages page, you can now see these three languages available, but they'll have no keys in them. So let's make sure that we have something that we can actually translate as well. So we're going to go to push languages and we're going to select all of the languages here. You have, again have the option to select all or none or the individual ones you would like. And I'm going to push these to phrase. Let me go over here and check on that. Now, if I refresh, you've got some information here. We've got in English, all of the options. And if we were to change the target language and click on Serbian, you can see that those are already populated and those pairs, uh, those keys are all paired up. But if we click on German, click on German, I can't speak, sorry. <laughs> uh, then you'll see that there are spaces for a translation. Now let's make some translations here. Now the options for translating, I'm sure you're aware, are either to do it manually and we click save or to utilize uh, machine translation. Now let's have a look on click to start tutorial and you can see that if I click down, I've got a suggestion and this is due to our having paired up with OpenAI GPT for suggested translations. And if you're going into your account settings, you can find the machine translation options to change your default provider for everything based on what you have enabled already or particular pairings of languages which can be set up accordingly. So we have this set up. I'm going to click on this and then save. And then back over in Unity, I can pull to Unity. Oh, I should select which one I'd like to do there. And then pull to Unity. And then if we have a look at the localization table, you can see the one I manually entered and the one that I use machine translation to enter. And we can know that we can confirm that they work because if we have a look at the localization scene controls up here and change from English to German, we can now see those translated in your game. And this will run accordingly. If you were to click run, then they would just go for it. I'm not going to click that right now because I'm running a slow computer. And unfortunately, it takes a little while to load games, but you get the picture from that. If we want to get additional context, though, from those um, from those particular keys, then we should find the particular key in question. Let's have a look at this one here. Uh, here is the uh, particular uh, item for the text down here. You can tell that that's the case because in the text section, you can actually see it here. And we have some additional options. We have description, max length and update screenshots. Description means that we can add some additional um, context on that particular key. And then that will get passed back to phrase so that the people doing the translation have additional information handy to them. The max length sets the character limit 
And the reason for or why this is useful is because particular languages use more or less characters for their translations. Jap Japanese, for example, will use, in many cases, fewer characters than English, whilst German, and oftentimes, will use more, as you saw in this particular example here. Click to start tutorial, and then this uses six words instead of four. So it's useful to be able to limit that. So let's just change this max length to 50. I will also have the screenshot option. Obviously, when uh, you are looking at text, you don't necessarily always get the context. So we want to help with that. So we've got the option to update a screenshot. As you can see, you click on it, so you get confirmation that that's worked. And then back over in the uh, phrase plugin, we want to push this information to phrase. And back over here now, if we refresh, and go back down to that particular key where we made those changes, you can now see we have the screenshot enabled and we have the uh, description information that we wanted to add. And uh, we also have down here the character limit enabled. And you can see that we've used 39 of 50 characters. Now, if I were to go over that amount, you get warnings saying that your character limit has been exceeded. And so we want to make sure that we're staying within that. And that can be a very, very useful feature. And if we made changes to this, uh, back to Unity and let that save. We can then do a pull back to Unity of the languages in question. Again, I should probably select the correct one. And then if we have a look at the item in question, you can then see the description has been updated accordingly. And that will be true also for the character length if I was to have changed that. So those are all the initial features. Hopefully that's going to be very useful for uh, everyone watching, but we also have additional functionality in the works. We're looking at expanding on the functionality for screenshot support to accommodate multiple items uh, being selected in parallel. Uh, and we have a number of other ideas uh, in the works. So hopefully that's going to be very useful. Beyond that, though, there's a number of considerations that are worth thinking about with regards to how this can be useful for the connectivity across the phrase uh, ecosystem. And the reason why I say this is because back over in integrations, we are very neatly paired up with different repo syncs, GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. Um, we are also paired up with the Phrase Orchestrator for when you want to automate your custom workflows. We have um, the ability to pair up with additional API, uh, you know, your own integrations with our powerful API. And we have job sync. So if you are utilizing t uh, Phrase TMS already for your game translations, and you want to just send it straight to Unity or go from Unity back to Phrase TMS, then you can use job sync to send the information through back and forth in that manner. So it can be incredibly helpful. So that's everything from me. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to our support team and I'm sure they will be able to help. But that's it from me. Thank you very much for your time.